everyone, it's Michelle from Tape and Twine. I'm just throwing together an impromptu video. It seems I found myself alone this afternoon, which is a rarity. And I am so behind in my um, in my happy mail that I figured I might throw together a video um, trying to catch up on, on, on one. So before I start, I have to say I, I'm so incredibly late with this this happy mail um, I got this beautiful one from my dear friend Amy and let's see the date oh, she didn't put a date but I want to say it was around Easter time it could you know it was a long time ago and I really should have um, gotten something back to her and I got so overwhelmed by um, life that it just never happened. So I've been sort of putting things together for her over the last couple of months, but I haven't pulled the trigger on actually getting it to her. And she sent me some wonderful fabrics and a beautiful um, envelope full of goodies. And she's just such a um, wonderful person um, at just ripping and sewing. And she's got a very um, polished style but yet it's very um, original and she has like a very um, shabby chic I couldn't I couldn't think about it she has a very shabby chic style so um, I always want to send her things back that are in her style that I think she'll enjoy and uh, I've been on so many trips this summer, I definitely have some goodies. So rather than making her journal, I want to do something with pockets. But I haven't really thought about it. The opportunity to make something this afternoon just kind of came about. So I decided, okay, let's just jump into it without a plan. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. So, you know, you can craft with me, you can just uh, see if this idea works for you. I don't even know if this idea works for me. We're gonna have to see But I basically just took out a couple envelopes from my stash of junk mail And I was playing around with it for a couple minutes and this is what inspired me. I thought if I did a three panel fold with this eight and a half by eleven um, piece of junk mail with this little window that I might be able to make a pretty good size folio for um, stuffing lots of little goodies for Amy. So that's what I think I'm gonna start. So I think what I am going to do is, I don't know if this is going to fold in even thirds, but we're gonna give it a try. I wanna make sure that the fold here gives me enough of an edge on this side. So I'm gonna fold that size first sort of like a custom fold to that size and not even worry about folding um, one of the things I love about Amy is she has such a free form style um, I know she won't be bothered if things aren't exactly squared off or even because that's sort of how she works so that's kind of nice so I'm gonna fold this now in thirds and see where we're at okay so I have three folds here of this eight and a half by 11 envelope. I cut where it was um, glued. So there's an opening here, but this is still completely, um, this is still completely intact on all four corners. So I'll have to decide where I want. I think I'm probably gonna want this also to be um, open. So I should probably cut that off as well now. My workspace is a disaster, like a huge disaster. And I really should have cleaned up before I worked, but my opportunities to work alone in this house over the summer are so rare that I would rather work in a mess than not take that opportunity. So I'm gonna cut this little, that was such a jagged edge. I need to cut that better. Ah, I'm telling you, it's a mess, people. I'm just going to throw it on my paper cutter. So you're going to hear the paper cutter slice. There you go. I have a fairly large guillotine cutter, so it wouldn't fit in this space. So 
I'm thinking I would have, this might be my cover, and it will fold in like this. I might trim it. Let me see. This goes off the edge as well, though. So it probably is a similar size here. So if I sew this on, I can make a tie here. And then it can unfold this way and unfold that way. I think I like that. So what do I need to do? Well, the first thing I need to do is sew this right here. That's what I need to do. So I'm going to take a little bit of glue, probably a glue stick. I'm just going to, um, I think I'll glue on the bottom and just a little bit here. And I'm doing that just to keep it where I want it, but I haven't decided yet if I'm sewing all the sides yet. So because I'm not sure of that, I'm going to just do that so that it stays in place. Okay. Um, I also think I want something to come under here so that when I sew this line, it's gonna hold down on this side. And Amy is very much about fabrics and laces. So let me see what I have hanging around here. I got this in a, some kind of a flea market, craft sale, estate sale, who knows what. Oh, that's kind of a nice little trim right there. And I would still preserve that. I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to just put a little notch here and carefully rip down this edge like that. And it is fairly sheer. So I think I want to put something this way. So I think I'm going to go into my pack of paper. Now, I have to say Gail, oh God, Gail, why can't I ever say your last name right? Ag Agnes, ask, boop, boop. <sighs> Gail Agstinelli. Thank you. I just needed to take a minute there. Um, she, she has these bags that she has set up for organization based on, um, types of paper and I love that idea a lot so I started doing that and I find it's really working for me so I think I'm going to just put a little bit of torn paper down first underneath the cloth that way it's not so um, neat and, and, and the orange of the paper doesn't shine through. So let's see, let's see, okay. And I'm not going to ink it just because I don't want to. <laughs> Is that enough of a reason? I just don't want to. Nah, I'm not feeling it. And then I think what I'll do is I'll tuck this here and sew that in like that, and then that'll just be sort of a hint of the book page underneath. So I need something here and here. So I think I'm just gonna do a little collaging um, here and here, bef maybe just here first, and then I can kind of figure out what I'm gonna do. So maybe some masking paper would be good. Okay, that might work right there. All right.
And I have a burnisher. All right, so now I have these two sides. Um, and I need something down here. So maybe some kind of a light paper that is pretty, not that, floral, Amy's really about florals. Here's my bag of scrapbook paper and things like that that I have floating around from other, other projects. And again, Gail ha you know, has bags and that's really where this came from. Oh, I like this. So a long time ago, a long time ago, a couple months ago, I was at my swap shop, which if you follow me on IG, you'll see I love my swap shop. I get so many things there. And for those of you who are not from um, the United States, swap shops are sort of like a place where um, at our recycling centers and our dumps, where we bring our trash, um, some cities or towns, and mine is one of them, allow people to drop things that they think still have use to be recycled. Now I can't tear this, so I think what I'm going to do is just kind of cut a little bit of a curve, just for interest so it's not a straight line. And I found this scroll of um, sort of Japanese, it was a Japanese scroll of art. And it had this sort of like cloth paper. I don't know if you can see that. It has kind of a, a pattern. And Amy really likes blue and she likes light blue. So I'm thinking this would be okay for the base here. So this would need Fabri-Tac. Um, so anyway, getting back to it, my swap shop, I go there as often as I can because people drop off the craziest things. And if you have a very flexible and creative mind to look at um, materials, you can kind of figure out things that you may be able to use in the junk journal world. And anybody in ju the junk journal world knows that we are, we are experts at finding things that aren't intended for that purpose, and yet we use them. So I'm just going to trim back here. See, it's sort of like a cloth backed with paper, maybe. Anyway, this was a Japanese scroll, and the Japanese scroll part was in parchment paper. and um, But it had a big rip in it, so they had turned it in. But I cut off the pieces of the the paper-backed fabric because I thought it was kind of neat. So now I'm going to place this piece of fabric sort of in here. And I have to decide before I sew it what I'm doing here because if I'm going to ink this at all, I would like to, I should put something down on there first. So I think I'm going to go back to the um, bag with book pages and see what I have in there. Oh, let's see. I'm not sure I like a lot of these words, but let's I always look at the words because I don't want to have anything in there that's not good and I'm not a big fan of a couple of these words here. I don't like fail or failure. So I'm going to take that off. Yeah. Maybe I'll put it on this side. not bad. Okay, I'm going to ink that. If I can find my ink pad because it's it is impossible to find anything on this desk today. Oh my gosh. 
here it is. Okay. So how's everybody? It is winding down our summer here in the United States and the kids are getting ready for school. I can't believe I'm gonna have two seniors, a senior in college or university and a senior in high school. It's it, it just blowing my mind, truly. And um, the house has been so busy this summer that I'm really looking forward to getting back to a schedule. And although I don't, you know, look forward to my older son leaving, I do like when he's happy and with his friends and he's been working like 70 to 90 hours a week and I'm hoping that will slow down when school starts. But I actually don't really even know because he's in politics and there's a campaign right now. So I like this here. I'm going to kind of put it in the middle, I think, and I'd like to put something floral on the top and the bottom, I think. Um, the problem is, is that with the sewing, I kind of need to decide what that will be ahead of time. So I found this, well, I didn't find, my wonderful cousin Sue gave me um, some wallpaper because that was really not my strong point and she had a bunch of it. And I am going to use that here. And Amy, um, you would know her as the Thrifted Cottage. She has so much wallpaper and she's really, really good at using it. And I'm not really, I haven't used it a whole lot. I'm gonna just, again, tack this down a little bit. Actually, I should tack it down pretty good right here. The sewing will tuck down the rest, but. And she uses um, wallpaper quite a bit. I don't tend to because I just haven't found a lot and um, my cousin Sue had a wallpaper book and she works more in, she's not as into florals as what I do, so she did not mind sharing her floral book with me. I went way, oh gosh. And this is where you see the mistakes. It's not pretty, but it's real life. Okay, let's try that again. Let's put that more on the edge. Oh, Amy, when you're watching this, you're going to see all the mistakes that I make to your happy mail. Okay. So I'm going to put that in there, like that. And then on the top, I'm going to just do a little bit more of that um, wallpaper capturing the blues that Amy uses so much. And I'm not going to glue it all down. I'm just going to glue down enough to get capture the sewing because I'm not sure what I'm doing on this envelope yet. Okay. So this is going to be the, the challenge. I have to capture this cloth and... This cloth and all of this paper and sew it in the in the correct area on here so that this will bend just like that. Well, I won't show you because I'll ruin it. So let's just straighten this out a bit. I'm gonna take it over to my machine, make sure my machine is ready to go. It's behind me. I'm off camera, sorry guys. And I'm just gonna throw a quick, a quick uh, stitch here and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So I just put some stitches right in there. So now what I'm gonna do is trim off the top area that's hanging over. Pull it kind of tight. So now I have a little bit on this side going where if I fold this side, this fabric will be over here. So I think what I want to do is glue this down. I'm going to fray it a little bit first because some of the edge is just a little bit too jagged for me and I just want it to be a little softer. 
think I'm going to ink it just a tad, just a little bit. And then I'm going to um, glue it down. And with anything that's like fabric like this, that's sort of like this vintagey thin material, I kind of spread it out with my finger because I don't want it to um, come through the fabric and show up as like a wet spot, which I've learned the hard way over the years. Okay, so I have my fabric down and it's far from perfect, which is great with me. And now I have this area here that I need to finish on this. I'm gonna fold this in. So I want something really pretty in here. I'm gonna go back to that, um, that wallpaper. And I think what I'd like to do is take this creamy wallpaper and put it down on this side here. I don't think I got enough flowers on that. Let me try that again. around here. I like that. And I like how it comes into here a little bit. Let me round this off a little bit like that. And then I feel like I need a busy pattern somewhere in here. So let me go back to my, my um, paper. And I don't like cream. See what I have. Mm. Not digging that. That's too green. That's too tropical. might be okay because it has like this little lace piece. Oh, that might be nice. Let me cut this out. Let's see if this works for me. I can make it a little bit cleaner if I have to. Oh, that's okay. I like that. So then I had this like this. And then I would need something right down here. Maybe like a pop of color. Hmm. <laughs> what do I have that has a pop of color in it? have this artist paper from um, Stampington. I just feel like I want a floral. I feel like I want a piece of like Edith Holden or some kind of a floral. And I don't know if I have a lot of florals patterns available to me in my scrap papers. And I don't know that cutting a new one just for little pieces is too smart. So, let me see really quickly. I'm so sorry I'm off camera. Okay. I have this, which kind of has that green and blue in it. And then this would be like here. And then 
Where did my frilly lace paper go? There it is. Yep, I think that's it. Okay, so I need to start, I'll start with this first. You know, I am often uncomfortable by making these type of videos because I'm just, um, I feel like watching me craft, I concentrate so much I'm not really being very interesting to watch, but hopefully it's not too bad. Okay, so I'm gonna put that down and I'm gonna ink that edge. I'm gonna make this a little bit less straight. And I think I'm gonna put that right I think this needed to be, how did I have that? Oh yes, this came in, not the blue. So I'm gonna just lay that down. I don't need to worry about whether or not, I'm gonna trim it after. Okay. So I'll get that in first and then the wallpaper will come here. And I'll trim that edge just a little bit. Not a lot. So when I do, it's it's funny, when I first started with pen pals, Amy was probably my first happy mail pen pal person. And you know, it's scary the first time because well not scary, I guess the world is full of scary things and happy mail shouldn't be one of them. <laughs> so maybe scary really isn't the real word, but maybe it's um, a little nerve wracking because you want the person to like what you're sending. And at first you're not really sure of their tastes. And you know, I think people watch uh, the videos of people getting happy mail and those who haven't gotten it yet want to. They're not sure how to go about it. You know, maybe they're intimidated and feel like they don't have anything to offer. And what I've sort of found is the best pen pals are the ones that come about kind of organically, you know. Watching somebody in their style and maybe it meshes with you or even if it doesn't mesh with you, maybe they're doing something that you really like and you know, maybe there's a lifestyle thing you have in common. Um, it could be a, a variety of reasons you feel like you click with that person. Sometimes you can reach out or sometimes you can just trade something and that's how it starts. You know, you'll be like, you know, I'll trade you for this if you trade me for that and it ends up being a really good fit. So, you know, Amy and I, I think, exchanged our first last year and I, she does such a nice job sending me things and it was her birthday this month so I, I really want to make sure that she's happy with what I send her and as the more we write I think the more we know what the other person likes and our happy mail gets more and more personal so if you're looking to do happy mail I would say the first thing you should do is you know, if you connect with someone or if, you know, somebody tends to write a lot on your posts and you guys just seem to get each other, you know, reach out and just say, you know, can I send you a letter or, um, you know, I have just sort of a writing pen pal that I said, gee, I wish I had this or I commented on something she had that I liked and she said, I'll send you some. And I thought, wow, that's really generous. And since then we've been writing letters and I really enjoy getting her letters. And I think that a lot of times that's just sort of, it starts small and then if it feels right, it just sort of snowballs from there. Um, at this point, I feel like I have as many as I can handle, um, but I love the idea of random acts of kindness and occasional happy mail that have nothing to do with, you know, doing it on a regular basis. So I will definitely be doing hopefully more than just the people that I consistently write to. But it's, I tend to get behind and that's, and then I feel horrible. So I have to get on a better schedule so that I'm not falling behind. Okay, so I have the basis of the base 
the basis of the base of this collage. And this is all a pocket. So the, all of this is real estate for me to put things in there for her, which I, I really, really like. So now I need to uh, make it a little bit nicer looking on the outside, on this side and on that side. So since this will be the cover, and this goes just a little bit over, I have to decide, do I trim this or do I extend this? And the easiest way to extend something is by adding some lace to it. And I think the lace is the way for me to go on this one because it's very, um, very Amy. But I want to do a little bit more, um, I want to do a little bit more collaging before I put this down because I might want to grab a little bit of the edges. The problem is, is that I can't really sew it because I'll sew the package together. So I'm going to leave this to the end and I'm going to see if I have some fussy cuts that I can throw on the front to make this collage better. So this is my big giant ephemera folder of fussy cuts. And you've seen me take this out before. It's certainly not fancy. I never finished it. It was a folder, a wedding folder. Not for me. I've been married a long time. Let me take this out so I can kind of look at things that might go. I don't think Amy's a pink person as much as she is muted colors. That might be a possibility. Um, I like children's illustrations, but I don't think that's Amy's style. So it's like you want to put your stamp on it, but you also want to make it um, the style of the person you're giving it to, what they're going to enjoy. And I'd like it to be something that she can use to keep other things in. So I'm just looking around at what I have. Pretty. Iris is pretty. I really like that flower a lot, but I don't know that it fits there. And hopefully when Amy watches this, she doesn't go, oh my gosh, I wish she had put that there. I think I liked, let me see if there's anything else. I'm going to put some things I like aside and then I'll play with them later. Uh, let's see what else I have. I do have these cardboard cutouts. I'll take those out. <sighs> let's see. It was her birthday, so even though she is not a cartoon person, if I see anything birthday, I'm just gonna have to grab it. Oh, she loves birds. And birds would be pretty. Hmm. Let's see. I know. This is like watching paint dry, isn't it? Oh, this one's kind of cute. That's a little Victorian feel. I see a blue bird here. Ooh, that's a pretty bird. Oh, I like that. All right, we'll get that guy. And that blue bird's pretty big. Oh, I like the round. That's kind of neat, too. Um, and I like that flower. Anything else? I see a hummingbird. Who doesn't love a hummingbird? Oh, and it has blue on it. Okay, I think I have enough. You don't, you know, I think I confuse myself when I grab too much. So we're going to let that be. So now I want to sort of find something that I really like on the front that can really add to this little thing I'm making. So I have this little sweet flower here, which I don't want to cover up. I could come in on the corner here. And that would be pretty. 
I like the dandelion and the softness, but I think it needs to be like a stronger image. That's too small. Uh, let's see. I really liked the hummingbird with the browns and the blues. I could almost see, let me go back to this like paper here. I could almost see his head maybe behind something like this so that it shows off a little bit and then the lace is here. I think that'll work. Okay, so I'm gonna try to fussy cut him out. I don't tend to go really close with my fussy cuts until it's time because some of them are very delicate and I'm afraid that in the ephemera uh, folder they'll end up getting too bent. So I like to do some of the more delicate ones or the ones that I know that I'm going to do a little bit more delicate um, right before I place them. That way I know their edges will be in better condition. Oh, I'm sure everybody's been following along with this copyright issue that so many people are talking about on the groups. Um, I do think it does make for a case to buy kits because at least you know the, you're allowed to use them. It's been quite the interesting conversation. I'm really glad it's being held though and a lot of people are talking about it because I, I feel like Artists need to be somewhat protected, and I know it's frustrating to people and they want to use what they want to use, but just think about how hard we work at things and how frustrated we would be if a collage we made or a book we made was just completely used by somebody else. So I understand it, and I really, I I want to be respectful for the, to the artist because as an artist, I want somebody to be respectful to me. Um, I think it makes it hard because so many people buy craft supplies, especially at retailers, thinking that they're in the clear, that, that it's not going to be a problem to use it. And when it is, it's kind of upsetting because you've spent money on these things. And I think especially like the rubber stamp thing was a little surprising. and. I think the thing that surprised me a lot was um, thinking about laces and things like that. And it makes sense. I mean, if I went to Hobby Lobby and I just bought a bunch of pretty laces and fo photographed them and then put them in um, a collage, then why, or, or if I just photographed them as a element, then why would anybody need to go out and buy that lace? So I can see why um, a retailer might have an issue with that. I guess the hardest part is knowing how old something is and when it's copyright free, and that's the challenge. So if you don't know what I'm talking about and you're like, what the heck is she rambling on about? Um, I would definitely check out uh, Tracy Fox's Facebook page. Um, there's a video there. I'm going to have to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to watch it later, and I think they're talking even more about it. And I'm looking forward to hearing what they have to say about angel policies and things like that. In my particular case, everything I make is sort of a one-up. And I, I think that the one-time use law, where if you buy something and you can use it one time um, how you want, I think that covers a lot of this. And personally, I'm not too worried. I, I don't think... Um, a vintage book using like let's say this little butterfly I'm not butterfly hummingbird I don't think that whoever published this picture is going to have an issue with the fact that I made a gift for a friend and even if I sold this it's part of an entity and it's one small featured piece I'm, I'm not thinking that it's you know I know some people are really really concerned and now we're saying they're not going to make anything I think that we have to temper our fear with some realistic expectations. You know, I, I believe um, the person who drew this was paid by the, the book company, and that book company sold the book, and I bought the book. 
So everybody's been paid and, and I'm not reproducing this over and over and over, nor do I intend to. And I think, you know, honestly, I think they'd be fine with that. I'm not really that concerned, but um, I know that a lot of people are very concerned about this whole issue, so I don't want to diminish it. Diminish it. And I, I think, like I said, I think um, artists deserve to have their work, you know, protected. So it's just such a fine line. But I don't think anybody should stop trying to make things because of it. I don't think that's the intent of these laws. I think these laws are to protect them from people that are really reproducing them over and over and over and from pirates in other countries that are reselling artwork and I've seen it on, you know, some of the discount sites and on, you know, on, on even Etsy and eBay and things like that, people ripping people off. I think that's kind of the intent and I don't think this is what they're worried about. And I don't even think they would have a problem with it, honestly. Okay, how funny is that? I'm looking at the word fair. Gathering of people held every so often for the buying and selling of goods. Well, that's not really what we're talking about, but I like a good old fashioned craft fair. Um, I'm gonna put these words upside down. Why? I don't know, because I want them. All right, so the bird is in and we're getting closer on this side. I'm like, I'm just gonna make a very simple project. And of course, nothing is ever too, too simple. And I should get that under there, okay. All right, I'm gonna let that dry. And then I wanna add a little, um, some elements right here. So I'm gonna find a stamp with text. This is my, one of my favorites. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of ink on the corner. Oh, you know what, I should do this corner. All right, yes, this corner is the corner I should be doing. Just by adding a little bit of writing, I think it adds quite a bit to the elements of the page. All right, so now I need to trim that. Without cutting open the envelope, because that would not be good and making sure that this envelope is not glued, and it is not glued shut, as you can see. But I did cut a little close, so I'm just gonna add a little stitching right down there, just in case I caught it. And it'll make it look a little pretty. So I'm not 100% sure I'm done, but I'm done with this side for now until I've figured out what I'm putting in and everything I'm doing because I like to see if there's something that relates to what I'm adding. I'm going to make the edges a little darker, ink those up a little bit. Okay. So this will be the front of the folio and I'll put something in here. So in other words, let's say I put this piece of paper in here. I like that one because it has it. Let's say I'm gonna add this to this um, envelope. Oh, it's a little bit shorter than I anticipated. Okay. Slide that in there. 
And now I have the see-through envelope. I'll put something maybe prettier in there um, when the time comes, you know, something floral or, or whatever. But right now that would be the front cover of this part of the folio. And then the back cover is what I need to work on next. So now I go back and think, what do I want here? And I'm just looking at my That red is awfully dark. Let's see what else I have. So I did, you know, as you've maybe heard me talk about, I'm not one for using a lot of kits, but Tracy Fox had a little surprise promotion on for her Facebook group, and it was related to... Um, it was related to, I like that, to Wizard of Oz's 80th anniversary, and um, I ended up buying some kits. And I thought, you know what? I need to join this party and see, you know, what all the hype is out. Maybe I'll really enjoy it to the point where I will start using kits more. I'm not sure. But I am very excited to start using Tracy's. So, um... I just haven't printed them out yet. I've not been home a whole lot. Um, I'm trying to visit people and visit relatives in August while I can. Um, I have two dogs and it's really expensive to kennel them. And and while my both of my boys are home, I think it's a wise choice for me to take advantage of the fact that I have dog sitters. So I have been trying to visit people while they're available. And my sister you know, works in the school system, so I wanted to see her before she went back to school. So I'm gonna glue this on. I like the way that that looks. And my dog is coming to say hello. Hi, Piper. Hi, baby. I wish you could see her. She's like the cutest thing ever. She's licking my leg. Oh, I know. But I can't. You're too big for me to get you on camera. I know. It's not quite right. Let me pull it over just a hair. Okay. So now I have all this that, that we'll be able to see once I put that in. And I need to glue this down better. And I need to burnish this. Summer has gone by so quick, but that's always what happens. You know, it always starts and you're like, oh, I have, you know, three months of summer. This is going to be great. And, you know, there's only so much you can fit in. But I've had a really good summer. I, I really can't complain. Um, my dad passed a couple of years ago in the summertime. And he was sick for a very long time. So, you know, there were... There was a long time where I wasn't really comfortable going away because I was afraid something would happen. So now that, you know, we're past that, sadly, you know, we're at a place where we are doing things again. And, you know, when you're in bad times, you just certainly do appreciate the good times when they come, don't you? And you realize it's, you know, it can be fleeting, so you have to enjoy it when you have it. So I like this. I just want to put something here now, um, some kind of a trim. And I'm going to think about what that is. I'm not going to put that on yet because I'm going to see what I have in my stores, and I don't want you to have to suffer through that. Okay, so now I have a front cover and a back cover. And I need to trim this. And I need to now think about this inside. So this is really, this piece here is, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this here. I need to think about this. If I sew this and this, then I will have another pocket here, which is very attractive to me. But I really don't like this piece here, this very unfinished edge. Um, 
first of all, I need to even it out. Actually, I'm going to throw it on my cutting board so it's straight. That makes things a lot easier. I could, before I sew it, I can put something decorative there so that once it's sewn, and it's not quite straight, is it? That's better. Um, I can put something decorative here so that once it's sewn, it will make a really nice pocket and this will be pretty. And I have some really pretty washi tape, um, if I can find it. That's kind of the theme of the day, isn't it? If I can find it. Here it is. I'm just going to put this down here. Because it's a really nice thickness. Oops. And I like how the little butterfly will stick out there. I'm even going to wrap it around here. And before I sew this and this, I want this. Oh, uh, don't. Now I have to think about this. Okay, I need to sew here and here but not on this because then I will sew it down. Unless I want it to be another pocket in here, which might be very interesting. But then I also have this, which I can use too. I think I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna sew it here and here, I think. I know, I'm silent. It makes for very interesting TV, doesn't it? Um, yeah, maybe I'm going to put down something pretty first because I don't want that to be so boring. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. All right, so I'm going to just take this paper and I'm just going to sew here and here and then I'll show you what that's going to do. And I know it doesn't make sense now, but it will make sense, so I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So I put in some stitching here and here, and by doing that, what now happens is I open this up, and, and I open this up, and I'll have a pocket in here because it's sewn up in bottom, but it also has now made a very sturdy pocket behind this already existing pocket. So I'll have a pocket here, a pocket here, and now another pocket here. So what I'm essentially doing is when I'm designing Happy Mail, I'm trying to des design something that will fit in an envelope that I can stuff chuck full of really cool things and gives me lots of um, places to put it. So that's really what I'm working on. So now, what I want to go into is I want to cover this. Nope, I'm saving that for Amy. That I took specifically for her. I'm going to be taking this paper and I'm going to be putting it on this side. And I can't really sew this because then I'll sew this shut. But I could sew this, the top and the bottom. I guess I, I can do that. And I'm going to leave this jagged edge because I like that. So I am going to, I'm not making this into another pocket. I mean, there's, there's only so many pockets and at some point then you're making things really not that secure. So I'm just going to glue down in the center because I really want this to be secure. And I do want these edges to be nice. put this down and just kind of edge put a little bit of ink on these edges and I'm going to put the 
these down like that. Okay. Now, I'll, I'll eventually put some stitching here just to firm that up. But now I need to um, trim this piece of paper. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim it against this side. You know, this type of a project is nice because you don't really measure anything. You're, you're trimming it as you go. I could fold this in and then that ugly orange paper doesn't look so offensive. And I just don't, I don't mind manila, but this one is just really orange. You know, I'm not a big fan of that. So I can fold that in and that'll make a nice clean edge. It'll end up um, making this edge stronger. Let me put my this here so I can really glue it. And I like reinforcing edges of pockets because I think it's very easy for them to rip. Okay. So now we have the pockets reinforced and it doesn't look quite as ugly on that side, which, it's, which I like. And I still need some more glue here. And I need to really burnish it. That's part of the problem here. I'm not taking the time to do that step. my good metal folder. Oh, okay. And keep folding it to make sure it's it stays down. Okay, I don't want to put the stitching in because I want to put the, the back. Now I've been saving this piece of paper for this side because I love it and I just think Amy's going to like it too. So I'm going to center it right in the center of the page and I'll have to trim it out. Well, I should probably trim this side first. Although I can fold it in and then that'll make it nice and strong. So yeah, why don't I just do that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Fabri-Tac and I'm going to glue down this. Hmm. Now, I would have an opportunity to make a pocket here, though. And uh, what I like about wallpaper is how strong it is. But I also want to sew the top. Oh, decisions, decisions. Well, I could make a pocket coming this way because that will not change. That will not change the fact there's a pocket there. I know you're probably like, what is she saying? Okay, I know what I want to do. So I'm just going to put a little bead here because I want to hold it in place and a little bead down here. And I'm going to put some right here because I can't I can't sew on this side or I'll sew that pocket and I want it to be in place so that when I sew it it doesn't move but that my sewing machine will not go through the glue and this is probably not making sense but it will make sense so when I'm constructing something like this on the fly I'm trying to think about what I need to do on both sides before I go to the sewing machine. And I'm also trying to decide how I'm going to um, secure things because I don't want... I don't want things to fall apart. So I'm going to fold... I'm going to cut little corners here and I'm going to fold this inside the pocket that we made so that it's super super strong on this pocket right is that correct no <laughs> 
it is not correct because I was making a pocket. Okay, that's okay, I didn't glue it, so we're fine. It's this side I wanna fold in. So this is not a tutorial because as you can see, these are just projects that you kind of figure out as you're going along and you know, maybe if I like this, I will do it again and try to remember how I did it. But, um, okay, that works. Do you see that folded in works? It makes a nice edge. It secures this pocket a lot. And then I can fold it in on itself rather than folding it over the orange part. Okay, I can fold it in on itself, and that will be a pocket there. Okay. Does that make sense to you all? all right, have I just confused the heck out of you because it looks like now a major origami project? So let's just review before I go to the sewing machine. I had the big manila folder, and all I did was add a piece of junk mail on top of it here, a piece of junk mail on top of it here, and sewed that on, and by doing that, it made extra pockets. And then by covering the um, manila folder, I'm able to then add additional pockets where I feel it's necessary. So I am making pockets really kind of everywhere, and um, I think I'm going to need a name for this after, and it might be like my mega pocket folder. I, I, <laughs> I don't even know. Okay, so now I'm just going to put some sewing here to secure it, although I don't like these orange pieces showing. So let me, um, let's see if I can cover that with something first. I'll put some, some book page on there. And let's see what else I have here. Okay, we'll put some book page here. Furnish that. And then I'm going to go in with the sewing machine. And just so, if I'm doing this right, just sew this top. And by just sewing that top, it's going to maintain the integrity of this pocket and sure up this pocket. And I will actually trim this first. so that I can see my lines. And you're gonna hear the sewing machine um, because I just wanna show it to you right after. And my bobbin ran out. Do you see that? I couldn't see that it had run out and it ran out. So I'm gonna to have to change my bobbin. So I think what I'm going to do is this. This video has already gone long enough. I'm gonna make this into a two-parter. And when I start the second video, I will have the stitching in and the pockets will make more sense. And then all we'll have left to do 
is cover this side and embellish it and then start filling it. So I think we can get it done in two videos and then it'll be a cute little um, Happy Mail portfolio and I will show you what kinds of things I put in it. So that's it for today or that's it for this video. Um, I'm going to go get something to eat and then I will finish this off and make the second video. Bye.